close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, watch it all the way out, and then stay with the next breath and then the next. Try to keep your mind right here with the breath. You don't want to go traveling out all over the world, which you can do nowadays. You can get on the internet and you'll be on the other side of the world very quickly. But you've got to be content with being right here, because there's a lot to learn right here. And if all you can think about is what you want to know about over there and someplace else and then another place, then keep following all the different links, you never come back here. And as a result, you never know what's going on in your own mind. So learn how to content yourself with being right here with a breath. This principle of contentment is important. Because if we spend too much time trying to fix up the world outside, fix up our homes, fix up the family, fix up everything, make everybody wealthy and gain more and more things, we don't have enough time for the mind. Because the mind is one area where the Buddha says you can't be content. As long as there's greed, aversion, and delusion inside, there's work to be done. You can't say, well, I'll just be happy with my greed, aversion, and delusion. That's the wrong use of contentment. Contentment applies to things outside, material things in particular. Content with what you've got. As long as you have enough to cover your body, enough, to, enough food to keep you going, enough shelter to keep you protected from the elements, enough medicine to keep you at least in the direction of health. Okay, you've got enough. You don't want to waste a lot of energy making it more than enough outside, because that energy then can't be used to develop the qualities you need to develop inside. As the Buddha said, he was able to attain awakening, he was able to put an end to suffering only because he didn't rest content with the quality of his mind. If he saw there was still anything in there that was causing any bit of stress, any bit of craving or ignorance, okay, he had to not be content. He had to do away with, it, away with it as quickly as possible. So we learn contentment for things outside so that we can focus on developing what is really of use in life, which are the qualities of the mind inside. So take some time every day. Content yourself with being right here. And then see what comes up right here. Because if you don't know what's going on right here in your own mind, then you keep following in line with greed, aversion, and delusion, and you don't know it. You wonder why you're suffering, you wonder why the world is such a mess. Well, the world outside is a mess because of other people too, but inside the world your experience is a mess because of your own untrained habits. So you want to work on those, developing good habits in their place. And don't be content with the goodness you've got. You keep thinking of various ways that you can make it even better. Your virtue, your concentration, your discernment, your generosity, how can it be made better? That's one area where you don't want to just rest content with what you've got. So for contentment to be a high blessing, as the Buddha said, sanduti etamang galamutamang. It's one of the highest blessings. It's a blessing only if you know how to use it properly. Learn to be content with things outside so you can focus your energy on what you need to do inside, because no one else is going to do it for you. And it's not going to clean up on its own. You say, well, I'll just give in to greed one more time, one more time. Well, it's like potato chips, one more, one more, and then you finish the whole bag and you're looking for another one. You've got to say, enough. Well, we've all had enough suffering in our various, various lives, so we should try to find some way out and try to do it as quickly and as with much earnestness as you can. 